Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Today, my guest is Dina Pacwa, who is a wonderful healer, shaman. Um, she does all kinds of different modalities. She's a teacher. Um, she actually is an adjunct professor at um, Westcon, a college in Connecticut. Um, so I'm so happy to be talking to you today. Um, Thank you, Anna. You're very welcome. So I wanted to talk about what it means to be a contemporary shaman. Okay, well, as you probably know, I love to talk about that. And actually the title shaman, I, don't, I do not use for myself. I call myself a shamanic practitioner. Um, the title itself comes from the Evenki tribal region of Siberia, and it's a title for traditional healers in that culture that practice a very specific form of healing where they're chosen by the spirit world, they're chosen by their ancestors often, and they will channel or bring through the spirit of that ancestor who was often another medicine person centuries ago to facilitate healing for their community. And it's a path of service. It's a very difficult path. Uh, often they go through some major illness or accident or some you know, major challenge that can only be healed by the spirit world. So in our contemporary Western world, we have some wonderful techniques uh, that were brought through by Dr. Michael Harner, who is an anthropologist. So he was the first one to uh, really title Western shamanism, calling it core shamanism. And he went and studied with uh, these teachers in the Siberian area, also down in the Amazon jungle. And he found that they would go into this altered state of consciousness through different means. Uh, in the Amazon, it was mostly with plants. And in uh, the Siberian region, it was through working with the drum and also through ceremony and ritual that were very particular to, to those tribes. But they would go into this altered state of consciousness and connect with the spirit world and go into the spirit world and do the healing in the spirit world. And what he found over the years was that he was able to take some of what he had learned from these traditional healers and develop techniques that almost everyone can learn. So the majority of people can learn how to journey, as we call it. So that is contemporary shamanism. It's a series of techniques, uh, meditations, and journeying with the drum where you can go into an altered brainwave state and through practice connect with uh, different helping spirits, ancestors, guardian angels, power animals, that we all have this ability. So it's something that's been very profound for me, you know, over the course of my life, working with the spirit world to facilitate really dramatic change in my own life and in terms of physical healing uh, from cancer, from anxiety, from a near fatal car accident. And even though Western medicine and even different forms of holistic methods were also part of that, it was an integrative well, I think that it's always in that place where it's integrated. There always has to be a handshake, you know, and, and like you, um, I almost died when I was in my 40s. I, was, I went into um, cardiac arrest. I know you had a horrific car accident. And I also became a shamanic facilitator, although I'm really not doing it anymore. Um, but I love journeying. You know, I wrote a book called One with the Drum. Mm -hmm. But what more important is um, when people journey and they go to meet their spirit guides or meet their power animals or their ancestors and bring the, the answers back for themselves, it's empowering. Don't you find that? Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that means the most to me. I really feel like teaching is where my work has gone. Uh, I, think that, I think it's wonderful that um, somebody who is an alternative healer winds up in a college, an accredited college, like, and opening this up to the minds of young people. How do you find that? Like, are they receptive to it? Yeah, I mean, it, it blows my mind really on a daily basis that this is happening, even though this is my seventh year now of teaching. 
uh, at the university. And we have such an amazing team. And uh, Dr. Robin Hausman was really the one who had this um, idea of bringing these alternative and holistic health courses into the university. And now it's an official part of the health promotion major. Students from any uh, major can actually get a minor in holistic health now. And honestly, I'm just myself. I, I mean, I- That's who we gotta be, right? You know, I, I don't really have a choice. So I really talk to them very honestly and openly about different tools and techniques that they can learn. They learn to practice for themselves, like journeying is something that we teach in the uh, cross-cultural healing class. They learn to, to do these practices for themselves. So like you were saying, the empowerment. So when they have the experience themselves, it's much more tangible for them, just like it would be for anyone. And they're very open-minded. And many of our students are very diverse and they're, they have wonderful parents who are also open-minded and uh, also still retain some of their own ancestral connections. So it, it just reinforces things for them. So it's really an amazing experience. And what is a typical session like with you? Do you bring through people's ancestors to help them heal today? Or do you heal the energy from the past? Okay, so as you probably know in your own work, it's no two sessions are ever really the same. It's, you know, a lot of different things can happen. But I always pray and uh, call in protection and create a sacred space for the client. And I always call on their guides, angels, and ancestors, as well as my own. And a lot of people, as you well know, are carrying a lot of heavy energy just from all the stress, the fear from what we're going through with uh, the virus right now. So a lot of heavy energy. So the first thing that I try to help them do is release whatever they're ready to release. And that can take the form of just simple smudging and working with herbs and plants and just helping them do you know, from a more physical practice standpoint. And then, you know, I have them laying on a massage table, nice and comfy under a blanket. And then I kind of go back and forth where I'm going into the spirit world to work with angels, guides, ancestors, power animals, sometimes spirits of plants and trees. Uh, because in shamanic work, as you know, we work a lot with nature as well as, you know, more upper world guides and angels. So it, it's, it's kind of like I'm in and out of the spirit world, depending on what is happening with the client. But a lot of it is focused on clearing away the heavy stuff and then connecting them with or reinforcing their own divine connection and bringing in that light, whether it's coming from the sun or the moon or the stars or the angels. It's like I get a sense or feeling about whatever or a message about whatever that person really needs in the moment. And then afterwards, we talk about what came through for them and how they can continue the healing process. Because like you, I want to empower people. So I always give them tools when they're leaving. Sometimes it's a pretty long list and I worry that I'm overwhelming them, but I like to give oh, them tools wonderful. so that they can continue, you know, working on. That, that's their, really wonderful. Now, do you believe that there's evil spirits as well as can you <laughs> <laughs> oh sure i mean to me it's like look at the world that we live in we have the good the bad and the ugly is the easiest way for me to summarize it and i feel the same way i mean in the if we're talking about more of the heavenly realms i believe you know there's really nothing discordant there that we need to worry about uh you know in, in shamanism we talk about three different worlds and the upper world is, you know, where we might think of the angels, a lot of our ancestors, um, beings like Jesus and Mother Mary and Buddha would reside there. There's really nothing to fear as far as I'm concerned about, uh, about the upper world realms. And then lower world, which is more nature-based, trees, stones, plants, that's also a very nurturing energy. But when we're talking about this world that we all live in, again, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly, and there's, yeah, the, I definitely have experienced, unfortunately, evil spirits, dark energy of all different types, uh, so, so why you know, that's what, here? why is the evil here? Why do you think? Well, I believe, you know, that we live in a world that we were given the gift of free will, 
So we are, are given choices to either go down a healing path or what I would call, you know, a, a path of love and compassion. I don't even want to use like light and dark, but it's like a path of love and compassion or a path that's more selfish or ego focused. And do the and evil spirits capitalize on people who are going down that road? And I believe why so. are they here? Why are these evil spirits still here? You know, and I've, I've read and looked into this myself. I'm not really sure. I think it's because, you know, we as human beings have to take responsibility for our free will. And if we're engaging in unhealthy behaviors or thoughts or coming from, you know, a more ego or self-centered place, Feeds we're on. going to attract more of that kind of energy. And, you know, but you do think that like what I have found with um, when I'm working with people, people who are on the spiritual journey, who are walking in the quote unquote light, mm -hmm. that sometimes the darkness does come in to compete with that, to take away all that is good, to tempt, you know, um, and to bring them out of that place, you know, and, and you know, then, then there's the haunting of the houses. So, you know, you deal a lot with houses that are occupied. So would you call yourself an exorcist as well? I wouldn't because, I mean, I can help people clear away some of these darker spirits and energies, but exorcists, you know, I think of that as like more of the, from the Catholic church perspective, you know, the priests go through certain training who are trained exorcists. And I did do some of that training, but I never finished it, to be honest, because I didn't want to spend too much of my time focusing on that level of darkness and evil as a kind of a full-time thing. So I know a lot about it. I can work with certain levels, but I also know like what's, what's out of my pay grade, like what's, what's something I don't want to work with. But I do know people that, you know, I could refer folks well, to. When it comes to like what you've done along that line, you know, getting evil spirits out of the house, can you give us an example of something that you've done or an interesting story about that? Sure. Um, you know, and oftentimes it's not what we might encounter is not so horrifically evil. It's just unsettled spirits or spirits that don't know they're dead. I'm sure you see this a lot. Or they're, they're so invested in life that they're still holding on to anger or uh, fear, or they're really attached to the physical world so they don't want to go. So that's a lot of what I see. But, you know, there are occasionally things that are really malevolent. And that's where, as a shamanic practitioner, you spend a lot of time building your own connections to your own guides and angels and getting that relationship. As you know, it's like something you spend many years doing, developing those relationships with your guides and angels. So you know they have your back because they're really doing the work. I often feel like I'm just like the observer or the intermediary, I'm like, oh my God, you guys see that? What can we do about this? I but mean, that's, that's what makes you a real healer, you know? So for everybody who's listening, you know, a real healer doesn't say, I did this, I healed you. A real healer says, I'm the vessel through which this comes. And that's pretty much what Dean is saying. Like it's, I mean, I think like for me, the same thing, it's like, did I just say that? Like, where did this come from? It's the same thing with you. You know, it's like we are constantly um, getting these downloads, you know, from spirit, you know, to help people. Um, and so that's a real healer. You know, that's how you know. If someone says to you, I did this, I healed you, then you walk away. You know, you walk oh, absolutely. away. You know, you, you got to be really careful when it comes to um, certain things, you know, um, especially. Um, you know, around, around certain healers. You know, there's a lot of people out there right now who are claiming to do a lot of different things, but, you know, follow your gut. Um, you know, you will know when it's true. Are you also on an advisory board? Yeah, I'm part of the uh, Institute of Holistic Health Studies advisory board at, at Western Connecticut State University, yeah. And so do you put forward programs that um, are, that are going to be at the college as well? So before, you know, everything hit with uh, COVID, 
uh, the Institute of Holistic Health Studies, which I think has been around for over 20 years, to be honest. It's, it's been around for quite a while. And uh, more recently, Dr. Hausman and Professor Crystal Autori uh, were the ones heading it up, and Professor Autori is the one who is the director now. And we did have programs that, you know, for the public, we had lunch and learns, we had programs for staff, for the students. One that I really always looked forward to that we would do uh, coming up around the uh, finals time in December was called Stress Busters. And we would bring in comfort dogs, myself and another colleague who are shamanic practitioners. We would do uh, healing work with the students. I would help them find their power animals. We had Reiki, crystal work, uh, reflexology. We had comfort dogs, so. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. really nice. And the students love it. Yeah, well, I would love it. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, would you mind if I um, told you about what I'm feeling around you? No, please, of course. Okay, who's Frank? That was my dad, Frank. Okay, he's helping you. He's helping you move forward. He's saying that um, he didn't quite understand it all when he was living, but he totally gets it now. And, and he's so sorry if he gave you a little bit of a hard time around it. Um, was he very Catholic? Yes. Yeah, because he feels like it's either the way I was raised, um, which is fine for people to follow that, but he wasn't broad-minded enough to embrace what you were doing. Um, who has the E name? E? Well, my mom is Elvira. Oh, okay. She's she still here. Is? Yeah. Um, he's very much around her. He's saying she's changing the ways that she looks at things. Okay. Yes. Um, and he, he's thanking you. Like you have been more of their parent in so many ways. Um, and he's saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He loves you very much and is with you every step of the way and totally gets it now. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. He, he, <sighs> you know, my first entry into the healing arts was as a massage therapist. So I did have, you know, you were asking me about being, you know, working in university. So I do have a clinical background as a licensed massage therapist. I also have a master's in integrative health and healing. Uh, and I've worked in hospitals, you know, so he was cool with that. And then I learned Reiki, he was fine with that. But then when I started getting into shamanism and started bringing home crystals and feathers and, and different <laughs> tools, he was like, have you joined a cult? Yeah. <laughs> That's what a lot of people think. Isn't that true? I was like, dad, who's in charge of this cult? They don't know, you know, what it's about. You know, I think it's funny. We've met when we met, like, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years ago. Right. You actually, we're learning something called IET and worked on me. I was the, the guinea pig. Right. People. This is, you know, this is something that I think everybody needs to open their minds to. You know, just, you know, different socks for different jocks. Not everybody's going to do this or do that, but at least be open to it and recognizing that the energy around it is real and pure. Well, Great. thank you very much for being on the show. Um, if you want to learn more of about Dina and her practice, go to Embody the Sacred. Um, and she is also on Facebook, so you can find her there as well. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, if so, please like and comment on my YouTube channel and on the podcast itself. Um, it's all there, so you never can miss an episode. May the angels protect and be around each and every one of you. God bless. Thank you, Anna. Thank you.